and welcome you guys. It's nice to see you. Happy summer, end of summer. Um, and agenda revisions? Yes, um, I'd like to talk about um, the RFP for the track design. Um, it actually should be an action that we'll need to talk about. We have an RFP for selecting a firm to do the redesign of the track. So we'll add that as 5.7? That would be great. And the action agenda. Anybody else? Public comments? Do you want to wait until we do our equity statement, or do you want to sure. do it now? We'll wait because a couple students might ask. Might okay. Um, a motion to approve the minutes of June 6th and August. What is that? Second. I move it. Scott and a second. I'll second. Carl, any comments? Well, thank you. Do you have anything? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Do, in the this time? That's what do you think there are more students coming? I think so, yes. yes. Dude, so why don't we do yes. that? <laughs> more, than, more than those two? Maybe a few more. Okay, so let's do the board goals first. Is that okay? Sure. So we'll just wait. It won't take us very long. So. It feels like a very long process, <laughs> but we now have three goals that were set by the um, executive committee and the full board. And then we talked last, actually it was in June, about adding a fourth goal around diversity and equity. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the first goal was pretty set. The second goal, um, we can talk about priorities if we want, based on our training on August 2nd, which missed. you missed. But which, um, um, I have at least the, the initial thing. And Matthew said there was a video, but I haven't been able to find it. The, a video? Yeah, we're, let me check again, Scott, okay. on that. And then the third um, goal, the executive committee wants yeah. us to do a little focus in on what's the purpose of community engagement. Mm -hmm. And um, bring ideas back to the full board in September to kind of get a shared purpose from everybody. And then our diversity goal, which um, Kari had a statement for. We got a draft of that. Yeah. Um, a couple other updates. This is coming from the executive committee last week. We have some handy dandy um, summaries of policy governance that have been circulated amongst the executive committee members and that's sort of our foray you know first foray into this goal kind of understanding you know what that model is about a little bit more next time we meet bill is going to bring us some information about a second model maybe you know a way and so we're going to see we're going to do a survey of, of some different governance models and and go from there that's the executive committee that's mm -hmm, going to do that mm -hmm. so do you see that as kind of off our local plate until the I don't think there's any action we need to take. Okay. If, if you're curious to learn more, um, you can certainly view these um, um, policy governance mm -hmm. summaries, and I'd be happy to share information that we get about other models. We're good with the executive committee. At some point, <laughs> we're going to be bringing you something, you know, a recommendation of some sort, and some analysis, I believe. With goal two, this is really being driven by the School Quality Committee. We took the summer off, as many of these committees did. Um, we're going to meet again at the end of September. I think we're going to be probably be bringing the full board um, something to think about, some some either recommendation or a concept, um, because we're going to have to move pretty quickly in order to, to meet this timeline of identifying a goal based on data um, that we get in the monitoring report and from past monitoring reports um, in order to be able to, you know, uh, build those into next year's budget and, and plan. So more coming um, pretty soon on that. As Adrian mentioned, we're being asked to spend a little bit of time at this meeting talking about the purpose of community engagement, board level community engagement. So the second bullet down, September 2018. That's, that's where um, we're at basically now. And when we meet at the end of September, um, we're gonna have a, we're gonna basically compile all of that input and 
the executive committee will take it and you know, draft some kind of purpose statement. And then, should I talk about the fourth goal now? Yeah, and then let's go back. And, and then we'll we can go back? Yep. So, um, one, last time we met, um, Adrian and I had a homework assignment to talk about uh, fourth goal having to do with diversity and inclusion. And after thinking about it, what I would suggest is that we um, adopt a goal, some, something like, pretty simple, develop a school diversity policy consistent with our diversity, inclusion, and equity belief statement. So everybody remembers the belief statement. You've got an updated version. We haven't actually adopted it. Actually, we can talk about that a little bit tonight. But the idea is that we could use that statement to compare draft policies. The policy is what's going to be actually guidance for the administration and the rest of the school community to, to you know, to put into action. Um, and really the thinking with a belief statement was something that we could sort of evaluate and, and if we, if that's our starting point and our foundation, then I would be comfortable looking at some examples of other policies because I don't think we're experts in diversity policies. I'd really like to have some good, you know, sort of a pragmatic but also legal analysis about what works in the school. And then if we have our belief statement, then we can compare it against the, and, and go from there. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. And, and that also gives us a chance to put some tactics below our fourth board goal, right? At least a few, like, things we would expect administration to achieve. Yeah, and well, I think that would whether be... Whether it's curriculum or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be part of that policy okay. discussion. What, what are our expectations mm -hmm. around that whole topic? Um, so, um, Bill is on it. He's, he's going to be um, bringing us some, not just policies and templates, but also some tools that have been developed by other systems um, to help us work through that process. But I would suggest that we spend a little bit of time looking back at that belief statement um, and making sure that it, we're good with it. Not that it can't change, but, that, but basically that's going to be our working document to, to work from. So do you want to do that first and then yeah. do the... Yeah, why don't we do that? I sent out an updated version. Really the only change was the one that Karen suggested last time. I think it was the first bullet. It talks about all of our students, staff, and other stakeholders can make a positive. I think it, before it says do make, and now it says can. But otherwise, it's it's the same as what you what we saw last time. People okay with that? Yeah, okay good. with it. I think it's very comprehensive. Okay. Yeah. 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 Carney, that was that didn't make the time. It, it didn't. Yeah. I sent it out. Over the weekend, right. when I saw the Except older the version, I hadn't actually made the newer version, but I, looking at the minutes, there was that so one change. Sure I so I, I will send it now that I have the. Well, you have it if we don't make any changes to. Yeah. Right um, the one dated August twenty eighth. Right. Version three. The uh, piece that I handed out to you tonight, and I sent it card, is a piece that comes from the. A uh, two-day retreat on it that it's happened in January. Yeah, I, I put it on your table there in front of you. It's from what the VSBA and the VSA has adopted as an equity statement for Vermont. Um, and a lot of the leading research right now in equity talks about three big areas to look at. Um, and it looks like it's Understanding what, what you define as equity, which you're working on as a board. Making a commitment to high quality teaching and learning. And then leading with a vision to eliminate inequities on across any grouping of humans that you'd like to, how you'd like to do it. And um, it's really about doing that positive school climate and engagement environment and safety. And the three sub periods. And then the first bullet does a really good job of laying out all the different <laughs> considerations. Yeah, that took us a little while. Um, I 
in that group. Floor was part of that, I was part of that. There were about 50 or 60 educators from around Vermont, not just in the pre-K-12, but also from higher ed and um, other interested parties, Business Roundtable and others that wrap this together. So I don't know. Uh, I want to give you that as a point of information. And then there are quite a few references and resources that through my doctoral work, I've been, I've probably had three classes now on social cultural issues and all the um, equities and inequities and how you work on that in the school system and in culture and um, it's been a great deal of good learning that I uh, was not able to bring all those resources to that I have access to them and there's been many things that many other states outside Vermont have done for auditing equities, equity practices within schools and school districts and by actual sample policies as well. So it's not a recreating the wheel. So I think it's really great that the board is thinking about what, how do you define it and how do we define it here and then use that as a metric to judge what's been accomplished. Mm -hmm. Any other Did the BSBA questions? adopt this? Yes. In the BSA? Um, yes, we did in the BSA. Yes, I should know. And VSBA supposedly, and I haven't been able to get anything from them yet, uh, developing sample policy based on this statement. So I, I think we have a couple options. We could um, look at some of the concepts in here and see if we want to incorporate them into our beliefs, either tonight or in a month, say. Or we could, we could say we're good with the belief statement and keep, keep this in mind for the at the policy level, I think either way. I don't, I don't feel strongly. I, I kind of like got a little more time to you know, sit with this. Yeah, I don't think we want to try and meld them tonight. Yeah. Um, but I think we could look at them again in September. Look at okay. them both and yeah. see if there are things we want to add. Does that work for people? So that would be if we develop if we um, adopt a fourth goal along this lines, the first step will be you know finalizing this police statement. Yep. Yeah, it's just something about a little calendar. Oh, and I guess the thing I left out in the discussion, it's um, it, it seems like we are the group to take the lead on this. If you were wondering if the policy committee of the SU would would take the lead, it sounds like they would prefer us to, to be the, the driving force on this and bring a recommendation to the SU. Yeah, I think so. So it'll be our goal first, and, and, kind yeah, of. And then, and then we'll, we'll see what happens and we'll bring. Where it goes from yeah. there. <clears throat> Okay. You guys good with that? Sure. Yeah. Um, communication goal. It says, where is it here? By November 2018, the Washington Central Boards will define a purpose and strategy for board level community engagement and, and identify training needs. So we're looking for the purpose of community engagement. Why do we think it's important to engage the community? What are we looking for when we engage the community? Um, do we want their opinion? Do we want their guidance? What are people, you know, what does community engagement mean to you? <laughs> it's a big picture. Or, yeah. There's some interesting stuff out there. That um, I mean, I don't think there are any fixed answers to the questions that you're asking, which are all very good. Um, but there are, I think, um, other people who are thinking about them in sometimes in other contexts, such as in you know uh, city planners and things like that. Uh, but the the basic problems are pretty much always the same. You know, how do you involve um, 
the community, how to involve people in the, um, the whole exercise of self-government in a way that honors you know, their time and their energy and their effort to actually show up and be here, but that does not um, ask them, ask people to do things that are not within the realm of their competence, um, which, you know, just leads to problems, misunderstandings, and breakdown in, in relationships instead of reinforcing relationships. Um, so I, I think it's a very interesting discussion to have. Um, but I think it also maybe would benefit from having some background to it. I don't know, Bill, do you, um, in, the, in the course of your sort of voracious reading, do you... Um, I read a lot about this. Yeah, I do. You know? Yes. Um, so but I think it's, 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 for me right now, for the board, in that bullet, it's not the how, it's the why. Mm -hmm. Okay, you never get people to engage when it's about the what or the how. That's usually when you get the most attention. And the way you leave that attention is like, why are you doing it? And can people agree on why we're doing it? So if you know the why, and we talked about this as the executive committee last week, that if we can get from the board to the why we're doing it, we can figure out the how and the what pretty easily. So we're trying to answer the hard question first. Mm -hmm. And I think at the college board, you, you were there for some of this, Scott, it was trying to get people off of thinking about how to do it. Everyone want to talk about how sure. to do it. Yeah. And it's not about, we can, we can go talk, I mean, we can find plenty of places, examples where it's done well and different ways to do it and you know, go to the different definitions, but why do you want to do it? You know, it's the why, the why can go from is we want public support to support the schools to why because we want greater, we want more um, distributed decision making. I'm just making things up, and that's not necessarily the camera. Sure. But it's just, yeah. you, but you as a board, I think the five of you or the seven of you need to talk about that. And that's what we're talking about the executive committee. It'd be great to start to think about why we're doing it. Then we can go figure out the hows from either public access or PDQ or the other organizations. There's only a few in the world that actually do this work to say what are the best practices to help that why. Because as I've done for my lit review, the how really is determined on why you're doing it. And if the how is to sell a budget, it's much different than you want people in on the decision making of the direction of where the organization's going. So you use different hows for different reasons. Yeah. Good. So we'll talk about the why. That's, that's, that's what so, we're being asked to do. Right so now. right now, why? Why do we want community engagement? Why does the U32 board so need or? One thing I, I'm not clear on is when we say engagement, do we mean two-way flow of information? Or we talk, does it also include, here's a bunch of information, like our front porch forum posts. Is that what we mean by engagement? Is that is that included? Or is it when when we're saying, here's a bunch of information, tell us what you think. So is it a conversation right, dialogue. as opposed to yeah. just putting stuff out there? And I, and I, don't, I don't know what the answer is. But, but I think that's a piece of it. I think it's also having community members show up to help run a track meeting. You know, that's a, that's a type of community engagement as well. Um, we certainly saw coming out of the Act 46 process, we certainly saw a lot of, particularly at the elementary school level, a lot of passion from the communities about the role that their play, the schools play in their community, and the critical piece of that is, and in, in, in improving communication, improving <coughs> community engagement at that level is sort of a, you know, to put on a play at Doty is very different than getting out a, a budget message, you know, come come vote. But they all fall under all that you know that whole spectrum falls under community engagement. And I, I get the impression that not only us but our larger community feels like better community engagement will build a better school and a better community and a better educational experience. If if I were just to sort of toss out 
um, one possible answer to the question why. It would be to make people's lives better, um, including, uh, I, I guess not just including, but first and foremost, uh, our students' uh, educational experience and life experience, but also, you know, to the extent that that kind of ripples out to include families and and other members, uh, other townspeople, um, you know, try to try to understand. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, of our start time mm -hmm. committee survey. Um, there's so much in those comments about um, where people are are struggling and what they're having trouble with, and. Um, this is, this is sort of what I had in mind very vaguely, Bill, at the Callus meeting when we were talking about this. Just the idea, is there anything we can do to just, even the smallest little thing that might make that better for people. Um, so it's kind of, part of it, part of the why would just be to understand. I mean, that's why, you know, um, when students come here and talk about their experience at school and what they're struggling with and or struggling against and the kinds of things that might actually help make their lives better um, and the lives of other students better. This is, I think, a great example of, of you know, at least a part of that why. Could be more. Could be a lot more. For me, the part of the why comes from wanting or needing people to be educated in the community about why we make the decisions we make. Because we can sit around this board table and we can have read hundreds of pages and seen videos and participated in workshops and feel like we're making a very good decision and not have the community support. So I think the why for us is we need to feel like the community supports our decisions because they're elected officials. At the same time, we feel frustration when we feel like they just don't know. They just don't understand. They haven't read what we've read. They don't know what we know. So to me, it's little bites of education for the community so that we can, that we can disseminate. So it's not a two-way street, but like a two-thirds us, one-third them. Uh, something like that, so that because before we make the decision, they have, at least it's been put out there, the information, in whatever vehicle, I don't care. But so that there's a chance for educating people on, on the why behind so many of our decisions. Because that's what happens. Decision is made, and people feel disenfranchised, and they feel like they didn't have a voice. That's where we want community engagement, is for people in the community who aren't at these tables to feel like they had input. I agree. I think our job is to, why we want community engagement is to educate the public. But I also think that the public needs to educate us about things that we may not be aware of or that we don't have a broad spectrum of information about. Um, and it's absolutely a two-way street. And I think part of it is educating people that we might get a whole lot of information and then make a decision that not everybody agrees with. And why did we make that decision? Um, why did we feel we had to make that decision even though there were different points of view on that? But getting information from the public as well as pushing it out to them. I, I agree with that. I, I think about this a lot uh, in my work at the co-op because we're, we've got a community of 9,000 owners and it's a democratic organization, so it's, it's easy to get pushback from different areas in terms of decisions we make. So we often will choose topics to, you know, to bring to the owners to have discussions about and try to um, get buy-in by having people included. At least they have the opportunity to, be, to, to participate before the decision is made. And sometimes it works, sometimes not. But I think it's really important um, to go into those kinds of decision-making processes with a real belief that the information that you get 
from, from the outside will, will lead to a better solution in the end, a better decision. If you're insincere about that, if you're just going through the motions and say, give us input and then set it aside, um, people sniff that out and it makes it worse. So, but if, if you believe that we've got these thousands of people in the community with, with uh, you know, this variety of rich perspective and we can learn from it and, and it will help us in, our, in making the final decision, it's, it can be pretty powerful. One thing I would ask you to think about, and there is no right answer. Okay, so and that is at least one thing I've done from all the reading I've done. You need to think about, and Carl, you were going down this road, and we had this discussion at Calus too. Um, what's the difference between, or is there a difference between school engagement and community engagement? And I would tell you this, from what I tell my colleagues in Vermont, and now that I'm in New Hampshire a lot, at least once every month, and I tell my folks over there are super intense, the numbers that we have for the size district we are, they're like, you have tremendous community engagement. Go to a school play, go to an athletic event, come when parents' night is. The number of parents that come to this high school compared to most high schools, on a percentage, is really high for a parent night. And September 6th. Yeah. <laughs> By the way. So, it's just those, you know, and it's good. I think it's really good that we have a high, you know, we have a, we have a rigor standard for a lot, and we want more. That's awesome. We want to keep doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we want better engagement. So I'm not saying to stop, but I'm just trying to be this kind of a glimpse of what I hear from other superintendents in the state and outside. So, that's very interesting. Thanks. Do you have enough, do you think? I think so. You can take what Bill said and change it, have it be one of the whys is to maintain and increase community involvement in our schools. Basically, parents coming, involvement, attendance, support. And why is that a good thing? Said, Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we want community engagement? Because of that. <laughs> I'll give you one. The research is extremely clear about family engagement in school. Yeah. It does not matter the demographic of the student, it's proven across all demographics, that the more the family is involved, the higher outcomes the child has. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And there's, um, no, there's no question. There's no question. There's that no has been question. proven. You, I yeah. can take it right to Johns Hopkins or the Southeast Lab, and the research is very, very clear. Right. And, and if uh, that just sort of triggered a thought that an advantage of community engagement, if you consider it as non school family or non school connected um, community member engagement, is that They'll vote for our budget, <laughs> um, which I consider to be a good thing. And yeah. that, Scott knows, because you know, I talk about this where I'm probably going with my research. There hasn't been any research on that, on that non family involvement mm -hmm. in schools. There's not a research. I searched and searched, and been searching for a year. There's not a research base on how that affects student learning. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Um, we gonna formally adopt these. Yeah, goals. I was going to say, why don't we do it right now while you're here? So, um, <clears throat> a motion to approve the board goals. There would be four of them: the three that we've talked about, and then the fourth one being the diversity goal. Is there a motion to sure. that, Scott? And a second. I'll second. Carl, any more discussion on those? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries. I have a quick question. Do we need a retreat or are we good? <laughs> um, what I will do, it's going to be a little bit trickier because some of these goals are so mixed in with the full board, but try and put a calendar together and actually the three of them are pretty complete, but write a complete fourth goal yeah. with some bullets. Great. 
I can do that. Um, and well, then I, try to put a calendar together. Yeah, so when I read like goal one, each individual board has to work on the basically self evaluation on how they operate. And so, how are we going to do that? Just well, that's, that's what a good question. I was yeah. wondering about the how. When I read this, I'm like, yes, and then like, how? I don't think we really talked about that last time. I don't think there's been enough of that. For me, you see the who at the bottom of that, Karen? It says uh -huh. executive yeah, committee is starting that. I, I don't think it'll be it's exclusive, but they're taking on some of their own learning about different governance. So. Okay. And so, so our member of the executive committee would then come back yeah. and say, here's how well, I'll, I think I'll, we are going to evaluate ourselves. I'll bring that up. Um, okay. Seems like we need to do some self-reflection analysis. It's been a couple of years since we did a self-evaluation. Yep. Yeah, it has been a couple of years. Yeah, we. Um, but um, we, maybe we should probably. Program. There's resources, board source. And we all have. Stuff. We did one. Yeah. Probably. But we should probably all do the ago. same tool. Yeah. You know, but if we also <coughs> use it to analyze how we do things, our processes, and what about right. that is effective right. or ineffective. So, so that I'll bring that up. Um, next meeting because maybe all the boards will do that yeah yeah last time we used the VSBA tool yeah this, so. yeah and I think that might even be in the handbook right it is. isn't that where we got yeah. it from yeah Fine. and it's kind of the same you know goal to goal two is being driven by the school quality committee and we'll try and kind of follow Great, okay, I have some homework to do. <laughs> I can do that. Um, next on the agenda is the diversity, inclusion, and equity belief statement, which we sort of just touched on. But do you guys wanna say something about that? Is that why you're here? Yeah. Um, we wanted the five to go back up on the first day of school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And tell us a little more about that. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> to, to stay up, to come yeah, we down, to go up and then stay up because we don't really see why there would be a reason to take it down. And also, we put all this effort in, like talking to you guys, and you guys have done a lot of work as well. And we've talked to the faculty about wanting to raise the flags, and then we finally got it up, and now it's down for the summer. And I feel like all that effort that we put into it would just be a waste if we just kept it down. And I feel like it wouldn't be, um, I guess, it wouldn't be like a true statement for our school. Like our school in the beginning said, yes, we do support you raising the flag. And then like not putting it up would be like, we support you, but like, we're gonna keep it down. You know, it, w it wouldn't be a true statement. Would it be true, and I'm just wondering, yeah. if it still like spends a couple days up and then also then moves into the atrium where people can see it all the time, all day, or is that different? Um, I guess I didn't even I think about that. that. Um, like I like I don't have any answer for that. I don't. Okay. I don't have any answer. You don't need an answer. That. <laughs> yeah. just, just something to think about. Yeah. I just want like why though. Yeah, why wouldn't we raise that? So one of the things that, Not the, that okay. I know that I've, um, I've been talking with the other superintendents that have had schools that have passed this. And one of the things that we were, were all in support of what it means and the symbolism it has, it's how, one of the pieces of work we didn't do ahead of time was think about the next time someone comes to have the flag raised. And how does the board put together a policy? And this might sound like a lot of bureaucratic, but it's really for the board to think about how do we make those, how do they make those judgments? And one of the work that I've talked to Adrian the chair about, since she and I work a lot together on that, is on agendas is saying we need to have a conversation about how we make those judgments. Because there will be another approach from another group. And so the board has to have a way to think about those things. It's not a question of whether they agree, and I know they agree wholeheartedly, I've talked to everyone individually and I've heard it from them in a meeting, that they support what the flag stands for. 
it's it's how do we make those judgments in a, in a, in a good way and transparent way. And we talked about coming up with some kind of policy yeah. Yeah. to do that. Yeah. And I, yeah. I mean, from my perspective, <laughs> we, we, we didn't have a policy. We didn't really have a context for making the decision to raise the flag other than we strongly felt that we wanted to support you in, in what you were asking us. So I think we were really moved in that particular moment to say, we, we want to support this. But I feel like in some ways we did that. We made that powerful statement. And now, now we, we need to make that decision again. And I, I think I prefer to make that decision having thought through more of the policy implications. That's where I'm, where I am right now. Can I say something? As a, from like a teacher's perspective, in addition to being part of this group, one, I want to say like, by the time we had it raised, it's been raised for a very short amount of time. So I think that that is actually one thing that feels bad about it being not kept up for longer. Um, but I do want to say, like, as a teacher, as we, like, started these conversations, like, it did make a strong statement, and we started huge conversations, and conversations were happening, and we have plans to move forward, and I feel like the flag being up would say, we're still having these conversations, and, like, make that a part of the school, and, like, and the kids were showing up. I mean, I think it was really powerful. It was, there were difficult conversations that were really important, and I feel like that would, like, set the stage for like, this is where we are. I understand the flag idea um, of like other groups asking being difficult, but um, I don't know, I find those flags to be different for multiple reasons. One, like this is a statement that like many of the Vermont high schools are making because of the lack of diversity in Vermont, whereas other flags aren't being flown at other schools that I know of. Um, and, and it's not bad for other groups of students to show up to the school board and, and do what you're talking about as far as community engagement is and come and say how they feel about things, whether or not they get approved. But it just feels to me like there would be a statement without it up. May I ask, where's the Black Lives Matter flag now? Stephen's office. Stephen's office. Yeah. Um, is there any thought uh, as to where it would go otherwise if it's not on the flagpole? You mentioned the atrium. Um, we, we've been <coughs> trying to determine what would be best, whether it's a space in the atrium or another flagpole that could be up outside, um, looking into options. We really do believe it should be up at least the first two days because um, that statement is really important. It's, it's being protected right now. It's not a statement to say that we don't support it. Um, we just wanted to take care of it over the summer and people weren't here at all the time. Um, so it's, it's more about where can we express support of this group and other groups too that may come forward, maybe not all of them, um, but the ones that make sense to support the student voice. So yeah, I think it should be up the first two days of school for sure. And then we were hoping that we could figure out where to fly it. And part of my concern about it is I know you see it when you get here, but when do you see it the rest of the day unless you're in a classroom on this side? And I feel like those discussions need to keep happening and maybe it needs to be, that's why I put forth that idea of the atrium. Maybe it needs to be in a space where people are all the time congregating and talking and it will help improve the dialogue and bring it even more to the forefront. But maybe that's not true. That's something I wonder about. Oh, well, I, have, I have two things. Um, one is, uh, how come we did take it down over the summer? Because Montpelier, they had theirs up like, during the summer, so I just wonder. I don't have the answer to that specifically. Mm -hmm. I know that we... I can give that to you. Okay, perfect. So, um, I don't know if you've heard it's happened at People's Academy this past summer, but they've had vandalism. Mm -hmm. Montpelier, there's a lot more people by the Montpelier High School. Stephen and I talked, we made a decision that we couldn't protect it all the time. And we were taking it down late at night and putting it back up early in the morning for that mm -hmm. same reason. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want it, it was a, that's, 
I'm giving this straight reason we did it. It wasn't not wanting to have it up. We wanted to protect the fly. And then the second thing is, is that um, you, you said like we're worried about um, people hurting it, harming it, and taking it down or whatever. But if we put it in the atrium, I know a lot of kids that like try to jump up, even like for the other flag. Yeah, it's not going to be with the other flag. It's going to be somewhere else, more prominent. Like, like in the center, hanging on the ceiling. And not accessible. And not accessible. (laughs) (laughs) So then the good, even the good jumpers. (laughs) 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 Equipment to do that. But maybe that's not the answer. I just have a couple of things. I think having the flag up front can make the school appear more um, strong and more welcoming, especially like if you're a new kid and you're coming in and you're coming to a super, super white area and you see that, that can be a comfort to a person. Um, Also, I think this is missing a couple of things. Like, um, you know, all students benefit from diverse and inclusive school um, classrooms. They should strive to be welcoming and supportive of all students, families, and school staff. I think that's kind of the definition of equity. Yes, that that came from, that's not the Morris piece, that's a piece from DSA, the Vermont School Board Association of Vermont. Okay. I think they're missing a few things like, um, I think it's missing a few things like, um, well, you put race, but not racial background. ability, special needs, cultural identity. You put family economics, but it's actually um, socioeconomic status, um, home language instead of language, um, country. So I, of, I'm gonna say, just, we, just like, we don't have any power over this. Yeah, this I, written, I just think it's missing a few things. So. It's been written and adopted by the VSBA. The one that Jody just handed you is the one that yeah. we can change and add to. Yeah. yeah. This was just kind of for our information about what's going on in this state. One of the things that I haven't had a chance to give the board, but what's coming out of the national prominent is don't try to list everybody. Yeah. Say differences. <clears throat> and that there are differences among all of us. And that it, it's hard because that feels kind of coded <coughs> and does it really explain it? I'm not saying that I'm, I'm totally with that yet. I'm still trying, but I, I think whenever you make a list, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I think, so, I think and, and it does. Whether you try or not, yeah. it's going to, something's going to, something, there's going to be another added to that at some point. You know, we a couple years ago, we could talk about chan, transgender wouldn't be on that list. Right, or even gender expression. Yeah, gender expression, right. right. So, how do we make something for the board making the statement, and, and would love input on this, that recognizes those, so there's that inclusion piece but doesn't get to where where did you leave something out and I, I don't have the solution right now this minute but I think there will always be something left out yeah I mean yeah. Well, that's, that's yeah. A and so how do you um, I was talking with someone who's a real expert at this this summer um, and she was saying to me it's really about accepting differences and she does this work internationally and she said the same, we're working on the same issues as the five or six countries she does research in, US being one of them, Stanford University. And she said South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, the Commonwealth countries, we're all dealing with the same. So you would rather like not have I, any I'm not, just, well I don't know. I, I'm know. saying I don't know. Yeah. I'm saying I don't have a, an answer for you, but when you make a list, Jody said it for me, helped complete my sentence, was you eventually leave someone out. Because yeah. you're making the list, it has to be all inclusive, and then what happens when <coughs> there's another item? <coughs> and sometimes you can put a word like differences, such as, or but not exclusive to, mm-hmm. you know that type of thing. And I and I would I would implore anybody in this room and others that aren't right now, this how would you say that? I think some people don't even know what differences are sometimes. Right. You know, one of the statements in our statement all this where yeah all students have the right to an education free of free of biases explicit and implicit <coughs> historical contemporary based on their identity that's the third bullet down <coughs> which we're hoping includes everybody inclusive. it yeah. is inclusive all of our students mm-hmm. um, 
without trying to list them all. So let's go back to the flag. Yeah. So we have a couple options. It sounds like there's an option to put it in the atrium, there's an option to build a new flagpole, there's an option to put it on the same flagpole as the US flag. There's an option to raise it at the beginning of school for a couple days or a week. There's an option to wait and figure out a policy before we do anything. And all I can give you for information is that Brattleboro, last time I haven't talked with, um, I think it's Vicki, their superintendent since last, after they had collected the raise, that they were gonna have a second flagpole, it was gonna be a student flagpole, and have a policy to support hmm. how they do that. Did they do the second flagpole before they did the policy? No, nope. they didn't even do the policy, they like to put the flag up. And they did, and they're working on the policy, and they're working. So on they're on the same. They're in the same place, place we, we are. are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And that was as of like the end of June. Yeah. I mean, Probably in the same place we are right now. And did you mention the option of just sticking with our original decision? Mm -hmm. Which was. Just leave the flag up. Just leave the flag up. Well, um, you never gave us. You never gave us any motion time to take it down. We right. didn't. We right. didn't say anything. We didn't. But we just say it. something about February. Didn't we? Nope. No, nope. we didn't. No, nope. okay. we discussed nope. it, but in your motion never, so your we're motion never gave us. That's why we were at, we're at this issue today. Yep. Okay, so that um, we would not have to make a new formal decision in order to just have the flag up. In order to just have the flag up, because that would involve having to want to vote. Right, right, which is not warm today. Yeah. So, in a sense, what we could do is provide a kind of advisory opinion. Um, is that is for that the right? interim? Well, um, sort of, you know, say that um, something like we. So let me let me say something, Scott, because I think it's better to be direct than, um, and for the students in the audience to be more direct and have it. And not worry about our procedure so much. You yeah. run the board runs under Robert's rules. Robert's rules allows you to adjust the agenda in any way, fashion, or form you want. Our practice is as high as I want to go because we don't have a procedure and we don't have a policy on this. Our practice has always been we try not to have action to add action items that aren't already warned. Mm -hmm. I already asked for an agenda revision to do that tonight. So, I would suggest that you be, so I'm suggesting to the whole board that you be, if you want to be direct, be direct. If you want to say, leave it the way we left it, which means it's on the flagpole, tell us that. But not to, um, not to get into parliamentary or Robert's rules. Sure. Committee, because that's just not clear to the folks in the audience. That's absolutely fine. Um, what about just sort of, Concurring that we trust the administration's judgment on this. Is that our proposal is that it goes up for two days uh -huh. and then moves into the atrium? Yeah, that's our proposal. Right now. So would you need us to actually vote on that, or just to um, to give you the latitude? I think that I, I think you, should, you're having you're having a discussion right now, and I think it. You took the action, so I would prefer it if the board gave us some direction. And it is important to note that that's not what the students are hoping for, just as yes. we're having to follow up the dialogue. And has the administration thought seriously about an additional flagpole? Yes. And have you ruled that out? No. No. We just haven't had time to have the conversation with you about it and put a policy in place on it. We've had time to explore the cost. Yeah. You have had time to explore the cost, yeah, which is. is the reason. Five to six thousand dollars. So that budget could absorb that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what would be the point of raising the fl flag for two days on the flagpole and flagpole, and then taking it off and moving it to the atrium? Because I think feel like that's confusing for the students to walk into school first day of school and see it on the flagpole like it was last year, and then. A couple of days later, when they return back to school, be like, "Oh wait, where's the flag? Does our school not support it?" And then see it in the atrium and be like, "Why is it in the atrium? Why weren't we notified by this?" Because so far, it's only us that know, like the students. 
Did the administrative has administration have some specific thinking around that idea? Um, there are opening assemblies, so I'm I'm winging it here and assuming that that's probably what Stephen was thinking that it would be up, and then he would explain what the next step was for that flag for all the and students. And then it would move after he had explained that. But I'm not 100 percent sure what that plan was because we have not discussed it. Uh, you know, I feel like um, putting it up again is another powerful statement, and which is different from flying a flag every day. The, you know, the flag of the United States, the flag of the state of Vermont, these are, these are symbols of, of our union, right? And they're not gonna change. 100 years from now, we'll still be flying those two flags. <clears throat> Black Lives Matter, I think is, is I don't know. You, we, could, we can imagine it evolving, and um, there's, there's something else that is a symbol of inclusion. So I, I feel like they are different things. And maybe that's the thinking behind it, having a separate flagpole. I'm not sure, but um, for me, the, the whole point of flying the flag was to make a statement of support. And I think we did that once. We could choose to do that again, but it don't, for me, it's not necessarily an indefinite. I kind of feel like, I'm not trying to speak for you guys, but I kind of feel like you guys think that when we put that up and have that big ceremony, it's like everything ended. Like it was great, everyone was within it, ended, but it didn't end that flag. Like your support from us when we put it up there was great, and like we would love to have that support continuing on with that there because things haven't changed that much. In our motion, I think we stated that it was going to be the beginning of a whole process of understanding diversity. Mm -hmm. And so I, I believe we really meant that. That, you know, you talked about initially how Montpelier had worked for three years and there was kind of, theirs was kind of a culmination of three years worth of work. Whereas you guys were just getting organized and just getting going and it was kind of the beginning of a big long process. And I strongly believe in that and I think the administration started down that road and it's a huge hard road and we heard them say that in June or I can't remember yeah, when. Not June. Um, and they've done I know they've done a huge amount of thinking about what it's going to look like in the future and how students are going to participate and what teachers are going to do what the TA is going to do what's going to be different how they're going to use the resources they have what other resources they need um, so I believe and I think the board believes that this is a, the beginning step and we are not saying, oh, we're done by any stretch of any, you know, we've got a diversity and equity statement that we're about to pass and a policy we're about to implement that most schools don't have. This is kind of cutting edge policy development. Um, I just also wanted to say, um, the flag being up there isn't just for the school community. It's a great benefit at starting new conversations and amazing things for the school community. But when it's also up outside and not in the atrium, people who come to school functions, they're coming to a play, they're coming to the soccer game, they're seeing it too. And it's because somebody who's going to a soccer game isn't necessarily going to come into the atrium. And if it's in the atrium, they don't get to see that expression from the school. And sometimes saying nothing is just as strong as a statement of saying. Also, to I don't know, you said like this is the beginning or something and that it's not finished. Well, I feel like when um, a statement of not putting it up, <coughs> um, like there was an offer of not putting it up because you said you already gave your support and you don't know if you should, um, like that was already a statement. I feel like not putting it up would be saying the opposite statement and that like it'd be like kind of ending it and not continuing this beginning of like a new movement. I have one more question too. If y'all were to put it on like a separate flagpole, where would that be? Somewhere out there. Like still in good view of people who come yeah. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have to follow the flag protocol uh, set by the American Legion. It's usually a tradition. There's no real stated, so it can't be higher than the American flag. <coughs> the state flag. Is the idea that it would be the only flag or multiple flags? 
That's a good question, Krista. As I've talked to my fellow, that's, on the policy. that's, that's where on the this policy, policy uh, is going to support this. Is, this. I know it sounds. It, it, it's hard for me sometimes to think about policy and like why do I want to go with that because I have a statement of an expression that I want to make, and it's the point of having that policy will help the board think about the other. And as Jody reminded me, I had forgotten that we've had other questions to we've had other petitions to raise other flags that represents students here. Like recently after? Yes, yeah. yes. So we have to be able to judge that in a, in a fair and transparent way as we have to do other things in school. And the board gives those, determines those policies and then us, the Jody, myself, Stephen, as the administration, we have to figure that, we have to implement those. And right now it's, it's hard to implement that in a way some people we've been accused of not being fair for that to other people's requests and it's not about fairness it's about fairness but it's not about we want to do it in a thoughtful way and the best thing the board the board's really setting this up right by saying what are the beliefs of the board just like we did with the mission about what we do for schooling and krista you, you know this from the student learning outcomes that blue statement that's above the student outcome is what drives all the student outcomes. That's what this board started, and the whole supervisory said, that's what we believe we want our kids to have. I said yesterday, and Krista, you heard me say yesterday, I used the example of the Black Lives Matter flying as a great example of our students have shown they're proficient in affecting their local and global communities. That's what you guys have taught me, that you know how to do that, and you're courageous enough to do it. So, that piece is really, really important and falls right in that mission. And I hope that this board will say in their policy, it's gotta be related to the mission of what they said is we important for kids. Somewhere. Where did we write that? Was that in the, yeah, that was was that in the motion? Part of the that was part of it. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. for me, I always understood that this was opening a door. Like, and you guys, because you guys talked about that a lot, and I was always comfortable with the fact that you entrust your judgment with the fact that you're gonna to have to decide what goes along with our policy. Um, so does somebody have a suggestion of a next step? I, I think that it would be great to keep the flag raised. I don't like that. I, I was looking for a oh. I was looking for, I know, that's you guys. I was looking oh, in here. Because oh, um, I have an idea, but I like okay. to. You know, nothing has changed in terms of our wanting that flag up and that message, I don't think. Um, other than a new school year. You know, it's August, not June. Um, I guess my instinct here would be we've put it up, we want to keep it up until we've come to an agreement as a community about what we do with it next. And maybe that happens in the next couple weeks and we move it to the atrium, or maybe it's something different. But Certainly as the school year starts, I, I feel like we ought to have it up. Because I, I totally get the piece where we put it up, had a, you know, had a press party, and then we put it away. <laughs> and it's like, you know, we did it, now we're done. But we're not done. We're looking at hundreds of years of work, you know? And hopefully positive work. <laughs> but, uh, but I guess I don't see a reason for it to have come down. Or for it to have come down. Security to not, in summer. To I, not I stay that, up. To not, yeah, yeah, to not have to overly manage it. But, and that's a legitimate thing, you know, vandalism and what it is. Um, so my inclination would be put it back up until we come up with a next step. And that we stay involved in that conversation. You know, we don't let that conversation fall off the agenda. So and when you say we fall. come up with the next step, you mean the board? Uh, no, the community. The, Students, administration, and the board. And how, how would we figure that out? I'm not sure. Community engagement. Community engagement, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or would it be a policy? Until, you know, the flag stays up until we have a policy that, directs that either su that directs otherwise or supports what we're doing. And, and you know, may, there may be some huge community engagement in when we're thinking about that policy to hear where other people are coming from yeah because we certainly heard from another part of the community and i want to 
want to add to that that I recognize from the administration's perspective there may be some challenges to that, um, like security, like you know, um, and I wouldn't want I wouldn't want any of us to ignore the realities of those practical challenges. Yes, but I was going to say in response to what you said, Carl, um, I implore the board to come up with a policy within the next two months sure. and have it done because we really need a way to help. It, it is putting a lot of taxing efforts, and we told you about what didn't get done last spring. Good reason. I agree with the priorities, wanted the priorities, but either that or we've got to come back and ask for additional resources. So how about a motion? May I just, before the motion? Or, sure. or actually, discuss, discuss that motion, motion, and then we can discuss after, yeah. Are you guys well, okay would, with me would, making the motion, or do I you can, want I, can, I would move that we put the flag back up. Give ourselves a until, couple months to come up with the next step. How about until a policy is written and passed? Sure, sure, that works. Can I just clarify, like, so when you say written and passed, you mean that that would happen in a school board meeting? Yeah. Yep. And maybe, I mean, there might be some preliminary work, you know, here within the walls of the school. There, yeah. You know. Yeah. The, the board, the board, the board writes board policy and pass, <coughs> excuse me, passes it, and there's a procedure for passing it. Um, usually it takes a couple of meetings. You can't do it in one meeting. Scott, you had a discussion. Adrian, do you have a second on that? I was just going to say that. <laughs> no, Scott will second it. Thank you. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah. Thanks. Um, for me, the, the best thing about this whole issue has been that you all have, have actually driven it. And I guess I have a, I have a vague concern that's kind of the flip side of yours, Ginger. Um, when you said if you take down the flag, you know, it kind of grinds to a halt. Um, my hope is that if the flag is up, it's not like, yeah, we won now. It's all, it's all set. Um, I'm just curious as to, you know, what your, what your strategy is going um, into the future to sustain these kinds of whatever uh, kinds of action or um, <clears throat> contacts, encounters, discussions that have been generated by virtue of the flag having been raised. And just what your thoughts are about that. Um, we're actually going, we're planning on going to visit like elementary schools and talk to them more because that's where it really starts. And um, we talked about, what's the thing that we're doing next time, so. <clears throat> well, also last year we talked in some of the meetings about bringing in more um, community members or just outside people t um, talking about diversity or just um, workshops. workshops. Yeah, and um, what's it? I think also bringing it into a curriculum. And, and actually, re I received an email from Randall, a teacher at Randolph High School asking to come and observe us and talk to these students and talk because they're about to embark on this procedure. And so we had talked about the idea of also creating an alliance through the schools and maybe creating a chance for schools to come together and talk about it, it might have this like kind of unity as well as within the community. But I think to a lot of like, I mean, the teachers are moving forward with the idea of keeping these conversations going, keeping these callbacks happening, keeping people coming in the building. And also, part of what we heard at another meeting was some students feeling disenfranchised by this. Um, and so I think it's important for you guys to know that this has to be inclusive also. And there are people with other opinions or other feelings on this matter, and they need to feel included and respected also. I'm pretty sure that they have been. We've been last I'm time. Just, I'm just <laughs> telling you what we heard. Okay, I'm not, okay. I'm, not I'm just saying, we heard it. And, and how would, I, I'm not putting any judgment on them, but they were here and they spoke to us and they were pretty clear about how they were feeling also. So it's just an awareness on everybody's part that there are different opinions, there are different feelings, and it's going to take a lot of hard work and conversations and 
understanding of everybody's point of view. How do you feel excluded? Well, you I'm not. Actually, I'm not going to get into it. You can actually go back and watch the board yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> there is a like, video of it. You can watch it together, oh. not alone. Um, what I want to say is that we're starting next week with some. The, the opening days look different, and the theme is belonging. And I would encourage you to think about how you can include that throughout, because that's that's really what that part of what that flag means, right? That you belong here. Mm -hmm. And so how can we use that theme of belonging to support everyone to feel safe and secure in this building? Because it's really about belonging for all of our students. And so that's part of the discussion that the teachers are gonna kick off, your TAs are going to kick off with you on Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday. And so continuing with that theme of belonging, how can we continue these conversations? And I think the callback workshops is great. Um, working with other schools is great. I think you might have to go back and watch that video and hear what the idea. concerns were from your peers so that you know how to address it when it comes up again, if it comes up again. Not to be hurt from it. It's not directed at any of you, specifically. It's not personal. Does that make sense? It's coming from a place where someone's feeling like they're now, not having a safe voice. <laughs> And so how do we make sure that we allow everyone to feel that belonging and that everyone's treated as they should be with respect and improve our entire school community and culture? Um, so I, I think we have stuff ready to go and we have lots more work to, to do. <laughs> yes. We're nowhere near the end of the work that needs to be done throughout the whole district. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because that, that's really my main concern with leaving the flag up for an extended period of time. I think it's a powerful, and we're looking, I'm looking at the second bullet in our belief statement. All, all of our students should feel valued and, and feel they belong. Um, and I think this, this flag is a powerful symbol for some people in terms of feeling that they belong. And it's, we, what we heard in the spring is, I'm, I'm worried that there are students who feel like they don't belong when they see that symbol. I don't know that for sure, but that's the sense I got, that there were people that felt like, this is not for me. And I, I think this is why you have such a, uh, you've taken on such a, um, a huge and important responsibility. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's admirable, and it, as well as being uh, a very difficult test of, um, you know, your, how big your hearts are, <laughs> and um, how much you can kind of embrace people who are maybe not really wanting to be embraced, but who need to be, um, in order for all of this to work for, for everyone. So can we let Mia set her yeah. hand up for a while? Um, yeah. And then Mia, once you speak, I want to add something to what Scott said. Yeah. And I want to help Jody speak what I can. Thank you. Um, well, we heard a lot of these opinions last year. We had conversations with like the structure. We built time, or it was a callback, so the time was already built. We had specific conversations where people could come and they voiced their opinions, and we heard the opinions and the concern that you guys have been talking about right now. We already heard those, and we want to hear them, and the whole purpose of this conversation was so that everybody heard everybody's opinions, and it's still what we're going to be working on, and we've been I think our focus now is how we want to continue that, because that's what the flag is, is bringing all of that. It's still going to bring all that, and it's bringing everyone and everything, and not just some people's things. So uh, uh, our country's been around for, you know, 200 and some odd years, and we've been having these discussions, and we st they're still really difficult. So I don't expect you to solve it, but just know it's a huge... Yeah, bitten off a big bite. That's kind of where I was going to go. Scott, I, I agree with you to applaud the students that are here tonight, but the educators hold more of that responsibility than you do. And I want you to hear that from yeah. me as a superintendent. I, the teachers in this building, myself, the administration, we hold as much more of that responsibility that everybody feels belong. And belong. You can, the students can, can help it, can help it a ton but the, um, it's not born on the students in my no. mind. It's born on us as the folks that, that help you 
from everyone that works in this building. And you've opened our eyes. Yeah. So I, that's what I wanted to replace. Yeah, right. if, if I know what your intent was and from your heart, but it, at least to me sound a little bit of, hey, the students go to this. I don't believe the students are the lead. And they, they've helped us and they're showing us and they're brought out, but it's our responsibility as the educators, the adults in the building, to facilitate this conversation in a positive, proactive way. Just as Jody said, what some of the plans have been mm -hmm. for the beginning of school, which we've never, from what I know, have not ever done at U32 before. And continue to support the things that you want to try. Yeah. And let you be leaders. I'm not saying for you not to be leaders. I just don't want you to feel like, hey, we're getting all this okay. responsibility and what are the adults yeah, doing? Nice. Are you guys ready to vote? I'm going to vote against, and I just want to explain that um, I, it's only because we don't have that, we haven't established that context. I would be in favor of putting it up for a shorter amount of time, I'd probably go more than two days, but um, but not having it be, be up indefinitely until we create this policy. The thing I like about it is it kind of lights a fire under us it's to get the policy done. Policy, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that part of it. Um, but. Um, I'm just not comfortable with the, the you know. I heard Bill. I heard Bill say two months. If, if we uh, had a firm deadline, would you feel more comfortable with it? Um. Yeah, I mean, are, are, you, are you saying we all, we are committing to getting a policy done in two months? That's what I heard him say he wanted. I wrote yeah. it down here. Can we do it? I mean, we haven't even looked at a. I don't know. A, a, sure. Any? We, we can, a single one. We can certainly we can give it. it our best. So I'm not thinking about an equity policy. I'm no, I know. Policy. We're talking about two different <laughs> policies. Black flag policy. Well, I just want to be clear. What yes, I'm yes, and I understood that too. Oh. I totally understood that. Well, well I, mean, I, I don't know what those look like either, but it seems like <laughs> that's, a, that's a small yeah, policy yeah. compared to... Yeah, you know, no, he was, I was just talking about the flag flying policy. Is there an amendment that would make it look for you, Kai? Um, I think shortening, shortening the amount of time is what, is what I'd be looking for. So will you read the policy? Uh, sorry, the, um, the motion. The motion. Let me find it here. Okay. Uh, I just have Carl Wick. He moved to put the Black Lives Matter flag back up until a policy is written and passed. Uh, what did you say? Flag policy? Yeah, flag. We can add flag policy. Okay. And what would that? Just give me a sample of what, the flavor. Of what what is a flag policy? It means we will put up other so flags. Dreaming, dreaming out of the out of the and off the top of my head, and some of the conversations I've had with a couple of superintendents, it's something that the board will take petitions from students on raising flags that are in alignment with the mission and goals of the school. And I also see the possibility of adding a second flagpole. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right that, that, that could be, that that be, part of it. That could yep. be there too, but yep. that you have to have a decision matrix that says, I mean, what you're doing is you're linking it to, here. You're the learning linking it to your goals and your yep. mission that you've already adopted. And, and will you put up more than one flag at a time? Yeah, yeah I mean, those get into procedures and we could get into that. Um, I know that there's been some discussion about how long, what and um, you know what's the rubric or criteria? You know one of the criteria is that it doesn't um, it doesn't bring harm to another group of students. I mean, and, and I don't know how you judge that. Frankly, okay. I mean that's been some of the that, debate. That's really helpful. Actually, that, that's that's how that seems doable. Actually. That's it, it's been the debate <laughs> back and forth amongst the, the superintendents. Is like, so you really want to be the judge doing that? that you know? Yeah. That, that's actually, that seems much more okay. feasible. Were you uh, thinking I, an equity I, policy? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is a flagpole yeah. policy. Yeah, I was seeing it as a flagpole <laughs> policy that, also. And there's a way to raise them, and then there might even be a, a place of once they've been, I mean, one thing, and again, I'm, I'm talking, I'm brainstorming, the table, so don't take this as it has to be. It might be, you know, that after it's raised, it flies somewhere indoors or doesn't do Right. You know, you can, yeah. you how can long think you can do you come back to the board? Does it have a, is there a calendar of your rotation? I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of things you can play with. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and there are some examples we could look at. No. No, there's nothing. <laughs> Believe me, we searched last year a long time. I okay. put probably two or three people on the search. Everybody so, I asked about flagpole stuff last year, American nationwide, American you know, people I shot stuff out to, the best anybody got me was the American Legion. The American Legion one page handout on the rules of how to handle it. You know, don't let it touch the ground, keep it lit at night, or take it. Yeah, that's just my camp. Just a simple campfire yeah. list of how to manage a fly. Cutting well, territory. Okay, so I, I think now we're in a place I can support it. Um, I, I would suggest that, um, not part of the motion, but that we basically assign this to somebody to, to work between now and our Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I would be willing to do that with. I would be willing to do it, and then yeah. I'll pass it by whoever, okay. you know, to at least take a first stab at it. Potentially, um, we could adopt something next time. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Your policy allows you to do it. It does. Yep. And I mean, as we work on that, Adrian, we can talk about. It. And I think we'll have to wait until after the policy is done whether you want a single flagpole or a second flagpole, and we can figure that out as we go. And that wouldn't be part of the policy. No, but it would be we know whether we're having yes. separate. Right. Yep. Okay. And the board to make a decision. Okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a work in progress. <laughs> we love seeing you guys here. I think you owe a lot. It's okay. Okay. Thank you very much. These are hard discussions. Yeah, that was a great see of the policy though. That was nice. Yeah, I tried to get it all down. Yeah. <laughs> it's still here. It's Is been it? here since it's been here since. Oh, it's, it's on there. It's on camera now too, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Reports to the board. Kari wants to leave. His is it your daughter? No, it's my wife. Your wife's birthday today. Is it a special birthday? It's hardly an excuse. <laughs> They're all special. <laughs> They're all special. I know. I don't know. It's not a round, big no, round number. It's anymore. not like a 40, 50. No. Yeah. Um, cent actually, we can do this really quickly. Central Vermont Career Center. Next meeting is September 25th. Can you go? I think I can. <laughs> wow. I think you're going to have to introduce <laughs> yourself to them. <laughs> Where I was just looking at that. Students. We have no students, so we'll go by that. Administration. Jody's going to go first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen is okay, on his, Stephen is on his way to Michigan to take his daughter to college. Right. He left this afternoon, so that's why he's not that's here. That's my weekend plan. Um, we have students lined up. Yes, yes. we do. Yes. Lucy and we don't know the other one. Yes, we do. We, we don't. I don't think it's out I don't think it's public yet. Okay, <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> Go ahead, Jody. Lucy did an email and say she wasn't coming because she hadn't been in school yet, so yeah, yeah. there was nothing to report. Totally read totally <laughs> totally yeah. Thank about you, Lucy. <laughs> um, so I get to talk about some of the professional development that our teachers have been involved in over the summer. They had um, curriculum camp at the end of June, which was really exciting, and we've been sharing out some of the, um, the stuff, that, the good work that got done there. Um, I was able to participate, or I shouldn't say participate, watch the World Peace Games take place at East Montpelier. Um, several of our teachers took part in that master class with that, and that was like the July 23rd week. Yeah, the other thing I was going to add, if you want to go on YouTube and search for World Peace Game, hmm. watch it. It's going to be a great addition to our middle school. Yes, so our three social studies teachers in the middle school we're part of that master class and one of our science teachers in the middle school. And they are going to run this twice with their seventh graders, some of whom were actually in um, the Rookies game. And they're gonna use they're gonna use some different scenarios, but they're gonna do a quarter two and then quarter four and see how students have improved on the transferable skills, especially through that process and moving kids in their roles. So it was a really exciting thing. Um, on the Wednesday when the kids first started playing the game. I was a little worried about them, but by Friday when they achieved world peace, it was really exciting. So <laughs> it was really fun. In three days they did it? Whoa. They did, yes. They solved 23 different crises. Holy in, in, watch that. 
I two heard, and a half days. I heard they were very, you were there for the first day, so I heard yeah. that they were, it, it showed our educational system from what Jen Millarison told me, and that they acted just, it showed the strengths of our system, mm -hmm. and it showed the flaws of our system. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And it was fascinating, she said, and show something we've already known about our system. We're teaching too much technical and not enough holistic. Mm -hmm. um, wow. <laughs> and the board is second in the world. Dave Bezos actually made it, and the um, teacher who's been teaching this for 40 years said it was one of the best boards he's ever seen. So Dave's going to make us two more because we're going to have all three courses do this at once. Yeah. Which is going to be exciting. Oh, no. really cool. um, I also took part in the project based learning training that happened at the beginning of this month, um, the week after the board retreat. We had three days with the 9th and 10th grade teams. So the middle school took it in August of last year, and now 9th and 10th grade teams and a couple of other teachers took that, um, and they're excited about starting this project. I helped train all of our new teachers in restorative practice. So they've had their first two intro days, which was wonderful. It was a great, it's a great way to meet the new teachers. We have them for restorative practices on the Monday and Tuesday, and then they had three days of new teacher training this year. So they were here all last week um, getting to know each other, and it was quite fascinating to see them. Yesterday when you were doing the presentation <laughs> in the morning, all of our U32 new teachers were sitting together. Um, and once That's they, right, really they were, bonded. I noticed that. Yes, yeah. it's, it's quite a crew and they've, they've been great. So we have a good year ahead of us. Um, we've had a great couple of days of in-service so far. Um, we can't wait for the kids to come next week. And I actually will be running a training for students who are on our student restorative panel on Tuesday. So they are 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. So they'll be here on Monday for school. And then they'll be here on Tuesday when they're not, not required. Um, but they'll be here for our training, and they will be joined by six sixth graders who will also take part in the training. Mm. So that's really exciting. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, no, I think it's a great example of the leadership team. Jody said, hey, we could have some fifth or sixth graders, and did you get someone from preschool? I never, I wasn't on that list. Callis and Romney, so yeah. far. Yeah, so they I mean, really tried Yes, to Callis and Romney, or no? Yes. Callis and oh, Romney are the two so so far. Yes. I think yes. that it would be more from the other schools. It's just figuring out. Um, for the restorative practice, and, and Jody's leadership on that is just tremendous mm -hmm. for the whole supervisor meeting. She's the person we go to. Mm -hmm. I know because I've turned to her a few times and I said, hey, need your help. Mm -hmm. um, the other things I would add is yesterday we had Dave Melnick from Northeast, um, it's NFI, Northeast Family something. Um, and he's worked with us last January on students with childhood adverse effects, otherwise known as trauma. Um, he worked all day yesterday. We had, last year you may recall from U32, we had approximately 12 between the two different, somewhere in that 12 yeah. to 15, between the two different training we had. It was after uh, they did some real intense training, they became our trainers. So Dave did a morning keynote, and then not just U32 teachers, teachers from other buildings. We had a group of about 25 last year that we were with Dave. Um, that got some more in-depth training on, on trauma and child, adverse childhood effects. And they, um, they did breakout sessions on different things that you could do to help students that are feeling stressed and how do you work with that. And we wanna we want say, you get, for optimal learning, we don't, we don't want kids to have, we don't want kids in the area of no stress. Actually, learning doesn't really occur there. Mm -hmm. We want kids in, mild to moderate stress. That's where learning occurs. Mm -hmm. So the stress can be good. Yeah. It's when we get to the high levels of stress or toxic that we have issues. Um, and so teachers got a lot, I think, of firsthand knowledge of how to use that training. As of this morning, we had, we said so we were doing around another cohort of 20 for folks to get some in-depth training, and I think there were like 37 or 38 on the feedback from the day before that said, hey, I want more of this. We're actually going to look and see if we can bring another cohort right to campus <coughs> instead of drive. Um, as well as all the PD that Jody talked about, um, as you may remember for our school, for emotional social um, learning, we also use responsive classroom at the elementary school. So we had, I think, 12 
all but two of our new teachers in the elementary schools went through our week-long intensive for that. As Jody, she told you about um, induction. We expanded that from two days to three days this year, and they all, all the new teachers on Friday, when I saw them Friday morning, they were pretty full at that point. So it's a lot, but we are, we're doing a lot, and so it's gonna require more and more training that we provide. Um, and so that's just gonna be part of what we're gonna have to do. Um, I would say that on the facilities front, everything's pretty well to go. You've seen Shapiro, if you didn't see it coming in, you've probably seen it this summer, it's really gone through a renovation, windows have been redone, the roof is gonna be finished this weekend, we're promised. Uh, you'll see it's had water and ice on it, so it's been plenty sealed, but the shingles need to go on. Um, and that's where the alternative program is gonna be housed out there. So to have kids out there permanently, we had to do some things to meet fire code. Um, and so there's that. I know there's been some alarm work probably forgetting something else big in the building. There's a whole list on page 12. Oh, yeah. So, oh, Stephen gave it to us. Stephen yeah. Gave it to yeah. Um, a facility improvements. So, the trail work, the trails are working. Yeah, the trails, they put down some gravel out there. Um, and there's, all, there's constant floor rotation throughout the building, as you said, Lauren. There's, you know, the BTC is just at that place. And the fire out kind of the reheating of the um, I'm going to talk about the track. Let me talk a little bit about the elevator as well. That's something that will come to you. That's in the capital project, but there's an elevator that has some serious repair that some design work to be done on right now to get our RFP out to be done this year. So. Questions for them? Thank you. It's really nice to hear all the professional development. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't even topics. count what's in his. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, right. working on specific courses yeah. this summer. That's yeah, so that. That's great. Um, Finance committee has not so, met. So there is a summary. Um, this is the final, right? This is the final. Oh, uh, yes. Finished last it's week. 13. So this is the final. And essentially, what this is telling us is we did well on both ends. We had more revenue than expected and less expenses. So we, we ended up 300,000 and change, uh, better, about 2%, I kept it, so that's really yeah. very nice. Um, and so we have some uh, excess fund balance in excess of our 4% target to, to work with. And I'll be talking in a bit under the action item that I reserved about some ideas that Stephen and I have. I'm going to take care of that list right there. So I think it's September. Yes. And, the, uh, and the audit is happening. The audit is done. The audit finished. Uh, they're supposed to have preliminary drafts to Laurie and I in a couple of weeks. And food service? It's doing well. Better than it was. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's relative. Okay. That didn't, <laughs> it didn't look better to me, but. I understand that. Okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Mm -hmm. Um, executive committee. Yeah, so uh, we, our meeting last week, we, we talked a lot about the goals. The other thing I wanted to share with you was around Act 46 timing. Um, so we don't know what the board's going to decide, obviously, but we do know that if the decision is to merge governance, then we're going to have to move quickly. And in that spirit, the executive committee talked about a couple different things. Well, first of all, They'll lay out a calendar with the various um, considerations of budgeting. Just we have to budget anyway, no matter what happens for next year. So we put that on, and then we overlaid um, some of the, the timing of, of uh, various Act 46 uh, things that would have to happen. And from that, um, two things came up. First of all, we authorized Matthew, the chair of the committee, um, to initiate some talks with a twin field chair to talk about a framework or how how could we have more conversation how could we explore potential since it's a we're basically in a very unique situation right now and uh, the sense is well we, we we at least need to know what our options are so matthew's going to be doing that over this next month and we'll hear from him you'll likely get a report on that at the september full board meeting and there may be a, um, a recommendation from the executive committee about forming of exploratory committee uh, with regards to Twinfield. The other thing was um, we are likely going to form a committee in September to work on various governance issues including 
you know, this is if, in the scenario of, of um, merged governance, um, articles of incorporation and specifically debt. So we are being asked to think about who we would like from this board to represent us on that committee to be working on those topics. And do we have any priority topics that we would like that committee to start with? And do you want an answer tonight to that? Kind of, yeah. So who would want to represent? Or, or, or we... Scott! <laughs> I'm going to say George. Or John. Scott, you can. Anybody else want to do it? There's a man. I'd be willing. Oh, you had a big uh, smile. I no. care about governance very much. I'd be willing to. Yeah. And this is more than governance, though. No, it's so, yeah. governance so merging into that. A little bit. Stephen Look and Chris McVeigh have said they're going to put together a proposal to bring back to the executive committee. And I don't think it's one person. I think there'll be probably more than one person to quickly, because when the 706B committees were working, there was lots of work done, but no resolution on where to go with the different articles of agreement. Right. So they're thinking that there were multiple committees working on separate different articles, articles. to come to a proposed resolution for forced merger comes because there is 90 days from whence the decision comes and there are, are proposed articles that will come from the separate from the state board for us to use unless ours are adopted by the state board within those 90 days. Adopted by the state board. They have to approve them. So we have 90 days. So you want to have them ready before, in case that happens. and if you don't need them, you don't need them. And that was the, the talk of the executive So and Rick was great about starting because I think we should start having these discussions just in case. So we're not, so we can determine versus having you accept it. Yeah. And I, I'm, I have language on debt anyway. So oh, good. that would be. Certainly. Yeah. 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 How would a lawsuit affect this? Like if certain individuals filed a lawsuit to prevent the merger, if there's a first merger? Um, I would say that the biggest, the best authority on that is our attorney. Mm -hmm. um, from what I know of the law, so I'm not gonna say I'm an expert on this, I haven't gone and asked that question, um, but the way that laws that we deal with for students, with what is in law, we follow that until the suit overturns it. Okay, that's what I'm hoping. Unless you instruct us otherwise. Okay. So you got okay. Scott as Scott. Yeah, I mean, we, point person. We, we're not even actually nailing it down now. It'll, that'll happen, I think, yeah. in the September meeting. Okay. We'll start thinking about it. Great. And um, the only other thing is, I'm sure this will come up during negotiations, but it was kind of a uh, surprise to me is that um, they're, they're going to start working on health insurance. Negotiating health insurance in the next month, next couple of weeks, something like that. Agreement with the association says it will start before September 15th. Um, so, and that's just the um, appetizer. They're negotiating both contract, full contracts this year. And state law that was passed in Act 11. So it was either 11 or 18. I'm sorry. It was House Bill 11, Act 18. States that all contracts must sunset and stop on July 1, 2020. So this is a one-year contract. So as, as intense as the past couple of years have been? This will be more intense than any other year. Man. So in doing things, I said to the executive committee, in September, I'll be looking for priorities because you have more work for just the board members, and I can tell you, we cannot staff it. Why will this be more intense, this year's negotiations? Um, not just in negotiations, the work that we have to do with 46, either way. Oh, okay. Goes, I thought it was the way, negotiations. No, I'm just all all the oh, I'm sorry. Work. I misunderstood you. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yep. That I understand. So, um, if it's okay with you, I'll you know, skedaddle. Yep, that is fine. Thank Can you. Can I just very ask much. one thing? Um, I, I prefer not to own this. Is it, is it available in PDF form? I was, you can give that feedback back to a to your policy committee member to get that back to the board member that pointed out that I must do that each year for you. Okay, but if I leave it so, here, you can leave so it. So the policy in here says you have to give us this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just made me laugh.
<laughs> I'll get working on that one right away. Thanks, so. though. <laughs> He'll take the other things. Would you like I a hired someone. sticker for the summer to do it? Sticker, yeah. What did we do to deserve stickers tonight? Say that to the oh. individual, please. They're going out to all the seventh grade parents, Ooh. and Ooh. Bill Ooh. saw Ooh. them and said, "Hey." Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kari. Thank you. Okay, where are we? Policy committee. Scott is. I'm sorry, Jonathan is not here. I am going to attend those meetings from now on. And if he's there, too, that would be great. But user two is not being represented. And it, I feel like it needs to be represented. So I'm going to get myself on that list and just go. Do you have anything to add about policy? We, there was a report in here about a bunch of different things. Um, I think all in all, there's a willingness to move fast to merge policies, policies. across the SU. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that's not universal. But all in all. But I think that voice needs to come up. Okay. Well, I think U32 has a powerful voice in that. And I think it's we, not need to, being heard. we need to move many of these policies into procedures. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jody and I talked yeah. about that many yeah. times. Okay. There are many of these. And are they, we just have to do that as a U32 board, right? Yep, for the, yeah, for the ones that are just U32. I mean, we have it now. We know what is across and what is because of all the work that we've done this summer. Okay. So is that something that will like, come to us at the next meeting? Is it, you, if you've analyzed this and you propose that these policies be rescinded, or, or do you need us to write them? So this is a piece that I have never really been sure on because of the way if this board instructed me to do it, I would do it gladly. Mm -hmm. But I really, I think intuition, or because it's never been directly said to me, it has been implied that the board does that work. Not by me. So I'm going to put that <laughs> as a discussion item in our next at our next board meeting, yeah. and maybe an action item also yeah. to do that, so that we have that discussion and then we make a decision to move forward. So I guess. If you need a motion, I would move that Bill come back to us with the list of what policies they have analyzed they think should be rescinded and become procedural so that we can help with that decision. Decide whether right. we want to do it. Rather than us go through and analyze and make a proposal, if they've already done that, we take we it. Haven't so done it yet, so no. I suggest we wait and have a discussion with everybody about whether that's the way we want to move forward on September 26th or whatever it is, and then vote on September 26th. Is that okay with you? Yeah, Karen? but would that be, would we have, we would just be blanketing, giving the authority to do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I'm One of the things I like as your superintendent is when, I actually like it when the board directs me. I think when it, things are implied or, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Hope for yeah. one person asks me to do it. Well, it's Basically nice for us to know point. when you need the authority. and I, I don't need the authority, but to say, yeah. Bill, we would like you to go through and tell us. Yeah. Give us a recommendation on what you think should be here and what it should be. Okay. Is that okay, Karen, to wait? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Um, school start time committee. Have you met this summer? No, you have the minutes from the last yep. public forum in there. And... I think if it's a very bad in my email from Krista, we are trying to meet next week on the 28th. Uh, 29th? 29th, yes. Wednesday. 29th. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. She may have put it in my schedule. I, didn't. I mean, Karen knows I've tried to contact her. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't do it, been doing my part of the phone tag work. <laughs> um, yeah. And Scott's heard this from me, but Karen, you know, <clears> just said this is one of those priority items. Yeah. It's a heavy lift, so I'm not sure in everything we need to do. Mm -hmm. That's what the lift. Yeah. School Quality Committee is meeting in September, and Negotiations Committee hasn't met. No, it it's Carl, meeting. right? Are you still our negotiator? Yes. Okay. So there's, Carl, you don't need to be at this next, the meeting I'm about to say, but there's a meeting of the presidents and Susanna and Char Chani. 
uh -huh. just to start to set like what's the schedule on September 11th, yeah. how it's going to work. Yeah. So we're just getting a preliminary to get everyone before we bring the whole negotiation teams together. Yeah. Um, action agenda. We've approved the board goals. Accept the letter of resignation from the school nurse. Is there a motion to accept that resignation? I move it. Okay. Second. What's her name? Mary Lisa Ann. Rice. Oh, Lisa Rice. Sorry, I was thinking the one. Um, <coughs> discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Approve the hire of the new school nurse. That's Mary Ann, somebody, right? Yes. Crossman. Yeah, Crossman. Cross Cross a motion to accept her. Nomination? So moved. Carl, a second? Second. Scott, any discussion on that? She comes to us with many years of experience from Hartford. That's yeah. amazing. You found someone. It's we're very lucky. Control. Yeah. Very lucky to find someone yeah. with experience. This yeah. experience she has. So we're a good fortune. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Um, approve the hire of the alternative resource teacher. Katie Stanley. Stanley? Staley. Staley. There's no N in there. A motion to approve her hire? So moved. Karen, a second? Second. Carl, any discussion about her? All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Opposed? That motion carries. Um, a motion to approve the hire of Jessica Walker as a guidance counselor, school counselor? So moved. Karen, a second. Are you keeping up over there, Lisa? Yeah. Second. <laughs> Carl, any discussion on that one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, may I just ask you a question? Yes, you certainly mm -hmm. may. Uh, what, I, I know she is replacing Scott Harris, but she's not actually, <clears throat> excuse me, not actually doing what Scott did. No, uh, she's, she'll be in the middle school. Okay, great. How did you know that? Pardon me? How did you know that? Because uh, Scott Harris was my kid's counselor. Oh, and he doesn't get her. Right. right. I, that's Nate, my understanding. Nate will. Nate yeah. will. Uh -huh. Okay, got it. <laughs> no, uh, and, she, and Jade is, I should have said something about uh, Katie as well, but Jade uh, comes to us. She was here as a intern and has done lots of work with Vermont sex equity. And restorative practices. So Great. she's a wealth of resources. Great. You guys always hire really amazing people. We try. Yeah. We try. We're doing good things here. Um, a motion to authorize the superintendent to, sorry, to sign the Cross Vermont Trail Association Agreement to grant public asset access and trail easement. And we these guys came and spoke so, to us right. so in this let me just explain a little bit for that. Let me get a motion first. Okay. I'll move it. In a second. second. Scott and Carl. Okay, so you had ahead. a discussion, but you didn't have a motion for me to authorize. I have the legal papers on my desk. Uh, we took us a little while with the attorneys to get everything right, and we went back and forth for a little while, but um, they're all ready to go. Our attorneys reviewed it and said, yeah, great. This will protect us. It's it's exciting. So, yeah. I, I'm all for it. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. you authorize. I try to have the boards always authorize if I'm yeah, doing sure. something. Yeah, like that. Sure. appreciate that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Have the Board of Orders made it around? Yep. Okay, all right. Um, a motion to authorize the superintendent to award the RFP for um, a civil engineer to look at to track. redesign, to redesign track. the track. And to start a big process. Yes. If you want to get a motion, then I'll explain it a little bit. Did you get all that? To authorize a request for proposals. Authorize the superintendent for the re a request for proposals to get a civil engineer to redesign, begin the redesign process of the track. Is that accurate? Yeah. Motion? <clears throat> On with it. Can I second? Scott and Karen? So, as you know, we've been dealing the past few years, uh, frankly, as long as I've been here, so this is year seven. Hmm. Uh, we resurfaced the track and then learned quickly that it wasn't the resurfacing of the track that was needed, but that it actually the subsurface of the track down three feet needs to all be replaced. Um, with the good management that you have <coughs> lead for us in our capital project, we have the funds to do this ourselves, to not go out to bond. Hmm. We don't know exactly what it costs. We have estimates anywhere from 700000 to over a million dollars. 
if it's over a million dollars, we'll be waiting a year or two. But part of this, what you're voting on tonight to authorize me to send, is we sent out an RFP to, with the help of Black River Design, who helps us with all our facility work. They said, you don't need an architect, you need a, it'll be cheaper if you have a civil engineer from your firm that's done tracking and has done all this work. Yeah. So we put out an RFP that came back a couple days ago and they're gonna look at it tomorrow with John Hemelgarten helping us to see who has the best proposal to do the design work and then go to a cost estimator so we can come back to you and talk to you about money management. Um, and the options if you go with a $650,000 or a million dollar option. So it's like anything, you get what you yeah. pay for. Yeah. <laughs> but we've gotta go down three feet underneath that track because the core samples are very clear that the gravel is no longer gravel. And that's why we're getting the frost teaming out there that's, that's impacting the track life. Yeah. And when cross country and, and track, cross country running and track combined have the highest numbers for any sports, yeah. that's our facility that, that needs some attention. So we're not sure that it's going to be next academic year until we get those cost estimates. Mm -hmm. But we need to um, have this firm help us do the design. The design will last. And then to go have it run through a cost estimator to get it. You know, what are the options? Don't have to implement the design immediately. If we say we need to still you have a design in hand. Yeah. yeah, but the capital, the good management that you've helped us establish as a board for the capital uh, planning budget is, you know, is what we're, we're going to. So we're not going to a bond for this, and that's what the voters have told us is no, no more bonds to get us out. How many proposals? Do you know how many proposals? I know there's at least three in. It was publicly advertised and went out to firms that we knew that did it as well. Uh, so we're fine that way. Black River Design, I just asked them to do the whole thing. It was easier than trying to do it in-house. We said, I said, John, can you take one of your project, your project people and have them put together what we're looking for? And they're going to start evaluating tomorrow and probably have that done by next week. So you can, um, if you feel comfortable with authorizing myself, I said to Adrian as a backup if the board wanted to go where the board was part of this, my next recommendation would be to have the finance committee come together once they did. The, but Bill Ford, who's been our clerk of the works for last year for the uh, bleachers and the blockers, and Bill's done everything we've done with the other elementary schools as, as part of the team. John Hemmelgarden, our lead partner at Black River Design, and then Amy Molina and Dave and they know they have me if they need me from what we've done at the elementary school. So I think we have a good team to look at the qualifications and give recommendations. Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. A motion to approve the board orders? So moved. Karen, and a so second. Moved. Carl, were there any questions on them? Lisa, I forgot to get these to you. Oh, there are a bunch of numbers. Do you just want me to hand them to you? Sure. It's not to, it's there for A bunch of numbers. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Future agenda items. I think we got a few. <laughs> a little diversity, a little flag policy. Board communication. Um, I will write a front porch forum. Unless someone else really wants to. I think Jonathan wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Berlin. Yeah. Where are you? are missing over there. Okay. And anything else? Oh, can I just say we're calling you your board member? Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say something else. Like well, I. Uh, just on, if you want to get a really good feel for the state of play with the State Board of Education at the present, or at the present moment, at least as of a week ago, um, you have to read David's article um, from, I guess, last Thursday is when it appeared. Oh, I read it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was actually quite good. And the other thing is, look at the last seven, or the last few minutes on retn.org of um, the state, this like triple marathon state board meeting 
they have it indexed by chap, uh, sort of segmented by chapters. It's the very last chapter, and it's really fascinating. This is what David was writing about. But Did you stay? No, I, but I will. I will never bail out of the state board <laughs> early again. It was. Um, <clears throat> Did you stay for the yeah. whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And it, it's it's it was, fascinating to see. I have to say, I was really surprised reading your article. It was not what I expected to read. It, I was not what I expected. Yeah. And maybe we've misjudged. Who knows? Who knows, I think, is the operative yeah. question. <laughs> Who knows? But. People ask me all the time what I think, I might get to guess. Yeah, <laughs> yep. It's just, it's just yeah. Okay. When it happens, it will happen. All right, so I'm going to compliment our principal, even though he's not here. Um, he and Jen miller Arsenal wrote uh, many of this new publication that just came out today on explaining proficiency-based learning, which we're going to be giving to all the parents and our staff. We have lots of these. It's a pre-K graduation look at it. A lot of it is U32, uh, but we want, you know, in our, um, I'm going to say mine, actually, because I'm the one who insists on this a lot, is that we look at things in a pre-K graduation continuum. So this explains proficiency-based learning. And that's really trying to help everyone be able to have the conversation. So they did an awesome job on this. That's great. And it literally came in the press today. Hot off the Hand that. Uh, Adrian reminded me, and so if you've you already had one and want to leave it here, that's fine. I grabbed these off the off the shelf. We had the implementation plan report. Mm -hmm. I think that was given out at the retreat. Yeah, so you might not have that. That did not have Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely have. So um, that's a great look in. We're going to do that. That's the change. We used to have an annual report for Washington Central. This is what we're going to change is that every um, end of it, each school year, we'll give an update on where we are with the implementation plan. It's a great idea. So It's much easier on the eyes, too. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it's really fun to read. And yeah. it, we change the things. And, um, and I love the statistics. Yes. And being able to kind of compare them and the facts was fascinating. Working with Ben Merrill, who is working with four or five supervisory unions, districts slash school districts around the state in central Vermont here, it's been, I mean, he worked for BTC. He's a professional publication person, and this is what he does. And he has a graphic, he has someone that works with his graphic layout, and it's just been such a help to help increase our communication. It looks great. So you, it you, looks great. hopefully you, you notice a, a uh, at least a print, and we're going to try to get it to the website as well. A feel we're establishing a marketing feel for what mm -hmm. our yeah. issue yeah. is. Terrific. Good. Anything else? You adjourn? Eight o'clock? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.